internet, it is I, Hewlett, and I thought I would continue my YouTubing this week, uh, give you a little update from the fan cave here. Boxes. Lots and lots of boxes. I love that. The reason for the boxes are over here. Obviously, there's the VR PC beast that uh, my son and I built a little while ago. I've been installing VR headsets. Oh my gosh. So. Oculus Rift, got that installed. This is the DK2, so it's an earlier model, like before they actually released it commercially. Um, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a little long in the tooth compared to the stuff that's out there right now, but still an amazing experience. Not really fair to Oculus because I also got the Vive. This is the HTC Vive. This is extraordinary. This is a commercial product, um, and it is a whole different experience. Uh, you know, you're using controllers that you don't have on the, on the Oculus right now. On the Oculus, you're using um, an Xbox controller for the time being. They do have a controller, I believe, with a new one. The Vive is a much more extensive setup, too. So you've got sensors. So there's one here, up here, if you can see that, and another one on the far side of the room up here. And that just creates this zone, which is this area here, where you can wander around in virtual reality. And it's extraordinary. Like, it's, it is the well, number of times I've walked into that cabinet. It, believe me, it really hurts to get hit by a, by, a, by a professional microscope, let me say that. Truly, they both are incredible. I, have, I feel like I've taken this step off the, into the abyss that is uh, VR, and I am, I am hooked. I've read about it, I know all this tech stuff about it, but to actually take that step, uh, it, it really is. It's like nothing else. It, it, it is, I mean, really, it's a mind-altering experience. Um, and the Vive is particularly lovely at it. Um, now, to be fair, it also includes things like these controllers. Uh, what you do is you set up sensors for the Vive um, here and up here, and that just senses this zone, the play zone or whatever it is they call, and then you use the handset to mark the area that you that is your safe area for, for, for virtual reality. But I gotta say, when the kid's playing it, I'm there as a safety because it's just too easy to, to hurt yourself doing this. There's a couple other things I wanna talk about. So, first off, I am doing a documentary called Upgrade Required. It is about rendering disabilities obsolete through technology. It's something I've been doing for a while now. I find it incredibly exciting and fascinating and I get to play with a lot of toys. So, that kinda of works for me on all fronts. I wanna start sharing this stuff. I'm sick of waiting, all this development crap. I wanna get this stuff out here, get people talking about it, get myself talking about it. And um, so I wanted to share what I've been up to recently. So, one of the people that I found in my research and who've been incredibly incredibly helpful with sort of insights into this stuff and the technology um, who has the IT brain to make sense of a lot of this stuff for me um, is a guy by the name of Eric Valor and he's far too cool to call a geek but he is a geek thank God because then we can talk about things like science fiction and um, and space travel and, and technology and our love of various different forms of it um, and uh, so he is an IT guy who as he put it kept computers alive for a living and they now keep him alive because he has advanced stage ALS and so he's got these things doing everything for him. They're speaking for him, they're breathing for him, they're really responsible for allowing him to continue contributing in a, in a meaningful and, uh, and exciting way to society. And uh, he's just a great, great source of information for this stuff, not to mention a really funny and knowledgeable guy. So what he did for us this week uh, is set up a go-to meeting, which I've never used before. Really, actually, very intuitive software. I really like the way it worked. Um, he set up a go-to meeting so he and myself could speak with Bill Smart at the University of Oregon. Now, Bill. Bill is another exciting guy to me because he is, well, he basically wrote the book on programming robots. He, he literally, he wrote, he's one of the writers on um, the O'Reilly uh, Robot Operating System Programming Book. Uh, just a fascinating guy to talk to um, and doing really, really interesting work. Um, at the University of Oregon. He also has in the past done a bunch of work on uh, brain-computer interfaces, um, uh, you know, actually like embedded, embedded uh, 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 BCI stuff. I'm really interested to see uh, how and what we can do with OpenBCI with this guy because he really knows his stuff on that as well. He is very passionate about getting this robotics technology out into the real world and doing important things, like making a difference. I mean, it's been in the lab long enough. We can do a lot of this stuff. Now, how do we make it work in the real world? And one of his solutions, amongst many different things he's working on, there's, there's almost too much to talk about, but the one I'm going to focus on today and hopefully share some footage with you on is this... Um, autonomous wheelchair. He has this great idea of taking standard wheelchair 
and shrinking down the robotics technology that allows for these autonomous robots and put them into a wheelchair system so that they can help people get around. Because you're sitting in a wheelchair, you have very, very limited movement, trying to navigate um, you know, the obstacles of life uh, are, and that, are, that are around you is very difficult. So why not? We've got, you know, self-driving cars. Why not have a self-driving wheelchair? And why don't we make it in such a way that it can be added to existing wheelchair technology? Um, he wants to inspire the maker movement for the hobbyists, all those electronics nerds out there like myself to start building these things and and I thought wow what if we could get in the in the classroom and start showing kids wow you put this together and this together and this together and and you've just made an autonomous robot wheelchair that can drive around for people and make a difference and do some good um, seeing how excited my uh, son got about building a PC imagine kids seeing you build uh, a robotic wheelchair. I mean, using an existing wheelchair. I, 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 I was, I, anyways, incredibly exciting stuff for me. Something that I really want to pursue. So I had a great long chat with him and I'm hoping to actually sit him down on camera to do much the same again in the future. But I wanted to share some of this stuff with you so you could start looking um, at what he's up to. Just a lot of interesting stuff. I so wish I was at university right now. Um, and in fact, I might be because I want to go and visit him in Oregon and see what, uh, what they're up to in person and maybe film some stuff for you there. Just wanted to give you a heads up on that, let you know what's going on. And so until we geek again, cheerio, or should I say onwards and upgrade.